I said, come on, is there anybody that's happy to be here this morning? Amen, amen, praise his name. Come on. Lord Jesus, bless those that are on their way out, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus, that each and every the one that's coming out today, Lord Jesus. We ask you to touch our pastor, Lord, Lord Jesus. Heal his body, Lord Jesus. Amen. Touch him wherever he might be, Lord. We lift him up in your precious holy name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's uh, have our church vision and then we'll do our mission statement this morning. Can you repeat with me? We envision Christmas united together. Church, where Reverend Robert Walker is the pastor. They will be celebrating their men's day at 11 a.m. Pastor Grant will be preaching, and he is asking the entire church to accompany him. The GLBC men will be rendering songs. The address for St. Stephen's is 3107 East 51st Street, Austin, Texas, 78723, and that's right up the street. Amen. 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 Virtual Bible study will be tomorrow night on Pastor Grant's Facebook Live at 6.30 p.m. On February the 4th, the Deaconess will host their meeting for the first Sunday of the month at 9 a.m. Sister Patsy Wilson is the director. Amen. The GLBC Food Pantry, for Sister Faith Sterling is the director, will be in operation on the first Wednesday of February, which is February the 7th, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. The GLBC Park and Road Ministry, Sister Sandra Tiller, the director, will meet Tuesday, January the 30th, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. The GLBC Outreach Pantry is in operation every Tuesday of the month. The next day is this Tuesday. Uh, January the 30th, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please see Sister Kimberly Evans for further information. Amen. Please submit your February and your February birthdays and anniversaries to Sister Smitty via text at 512-567-7544. Starting February the 1st from 11 a.m. to noon, Greater Love is offering a computer class every Thursday in the Fellowship Hall. If you are interested in attending, please bring your laptop or your tablet so you can learn on your own equipment. Amen. This is a beginning class for adults. Amen. 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 Please don't forget about Elect Lady Grant um, Brunch. The Brunch Committee is sponsoring a 50-50 raffle. Tickets are three dollars each, or two for five dollars. You may see Sister Linda Coleman or any brunch committee member for tickets. All ladies are asked to wear hats of their choice. The brunch will be held on Saturday, March the second, at 10 a.m. The tickets are twenty dollars a person. Please see Mother Lemuel or Prophetess Carmelo for tickets. Amen. And that's all I have for the upcoming announcements. Our thought of the day, Jesus didn't die for elect for you. He died for all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It's offering time. Praise the Lord, it's offering time. It's offering time. Praise the Lord, it's offering time. Amen. Let's take five minutes to raise this one million dollars for greater love. It's our offering. We have a benevolent offering. We have our basket. Let's turn it over to our blessing.
lead my life, but go into my future, multiply, and come back, good men, fresh down, sticking together, and running over, and God's sovereign seed.
those who were with him and entered where the child was laying. And then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Toledo Kame, which means, which is translated, little girl, I say to you, arise. And immediately the girl arose and walked for she was 12 years of age and then were overcome with great amazement but he commanded them strictly not to to that no one should know know it and he said something she should be given something to eat Amen. going back to number verse number 36 as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken he said to the ruler of the synagogue do not be afraid, only believe. Amen. For the short time that God has allowed us to be able to share space and time together, I want to talk from the subject, faith to believe. Faith, faith to believe. Earlier, earlier, earlier this year, earlier this year, uh, Dion Sanders, uh, better known as Coach Prime, <laughs> took the world by storm uh, when he went from a HBCU college program well. and then was transferred or took a job at a Power Five in Colorado. Uh, his first game was against TCU. TCU, that uh, the prior year, had been one of those that had went to the national championship. And so a lot of critics, a lot of sports analysts said that uh, Coach Brown in his first year didn't stand a chance of beating TCU. You gotta understand that Colorado's program the year before was a losing program. And no, they had won no games and it, they said it was gonna take more than a year for him to be able to turn that program around. Uh, in everybody's amazement uh, that when they played that game, that Colorado was victorious over TCU. Yeah. 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 And then when they were doing the interview, they said, Coach Brown, how is it that you were able to gather your men together, gather your team together to overcome and defeat TCU? Nobody gave you a chance. Nobody, everybody said you didn't stand a chance of winning this game. Coach looked into the cameras and he said, we believed. One thing, my brothers and sisters, that I've come to realize is that if you only believe that God can be able to work everything out for you, uh, the, re the reason, the reason, the reason why a lot of things that we we seek after in our lives, the reason why we can't can't achieve it is because we don't believe it. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm believing, I'm believing, I'm believing that, that greater love one day will be a 500 member congregation that we're going to have to go through two services and, and you're saying, well, how is that going to happen? Because I believe, but, you know, somebody in here right now, they're, they're believing that, that whatever it is that, that they're looking for God, that God will be able to bless them with. Somebody's believing for a new car, somebody's believing for a new job, somebody's believing for a new house, you know, and all those things are good, but, but what is it that you really believe in God for? Uh, and what happens is, what happens is a lot of times is that we believe something, but then we we let doubt set in. We let we let the, the critics set in. You know, there's, there's some of us in here this morning that we're supposed to be uh, been, been, uh, CEOs of companies. We're supposed to be but been directors at jobs, but because we allow somebody else to, to hinder our faith, we didn't we didn't we didn't believe. Some of us are supposed to be in brand new houses right now. But we allow family members to talk us out of it because we didn't believe. All you got to do is have faith to believe. Now I understand, I understand. Sometimes it just doesn't look like it. It's hard to believe when you can't see how it's going to happen. It, it's hard to believe when, when you can't figure out how God is going to do it. But, but when we look at Hebrews 11 and 1, Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what? Things not seen. I wish I had a couple of Bible readers in here. You may not be able to see how he's going to do it, but you got to be able to trust and believe that God is going to do it. Uh, uh, I feel my health coming now. I'm waking up now. Uh, uh, the, the other day, the other day, I had a friend of mine that was that was flying, flying in from 
Chicago in. And he said that when, when he was flying in from Chicago, they, they delayed his flight a couple of times because the fog was so heavy. And so finally he was able to take off. But when he got to Austin, they said that it was very foggy. And he was saying, well, if they could take off in the fog, how are they going to land in the fog? And then I, I, I wasn't there. I wasn't on the Southwest. I wasn't a pilot. But I could just imagine what that pilot was doing. The pilot said, I've done this a hundred times. Yes, Because when I walked in here this morning, didn't, didn't nobody check these pews to make sure that the pews were gonna hold them up? Didn't nobody check to make sure the screws were there? No, no, no. We just had faith that it was gonna do what it was designed to do. Some of us, we went outside and we cranked our cars up this morning. We had faith to believe that our car was gonna do what it was designed to do. We didn't go and check the power steering. We didn't go and make sure that the transmission was still connected. We just had faith to believe. Brothers and sisters, we just got to be able to have faith. Faith, even when we can't see how it's going to happen, we just got to have some faith. Even when the doctors are saying that they're through in the towel, we just got to have a little faith. Faith to believe that God is able to do what he said he would do. That I not hold you too long when you look at this text this morning. Here it is, that we know the story about a ruler by the name of Jairus. Let me pause right there. The Bible says that he is a ruler from one of the synagogues. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand what I'm saying, he is a governor. He, he is a president. He, he's a man of high authority. And here it is that he comes to the seashore to get Jesus. Now, now you got to understand that if, if he has high authority like that, he's in power like that, he could have sent somebody to bring Jesus to him. But no, he went to Jesus on his behalf. Let me put a dime in the meter while I'm parking there. Two somebody else on our behalf. We, 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 we're too busy trying to call our girlfriend to say, won't you pray for me? We call on our homeboy and say, won't you pray for me? We call on our friends and say, won't you pray for me? But when we learn how to go to Jesus on ourselves, see, some of us in here, we ain't never really been through nothing. And so that's why we don't know how to go to Jesus for ourselves. We want to sit back and send everybody else to Jesus. But, but sometimes you got to learn how to go to it for yourself. that he had been following Jesus' career for a long time because he knew right where to meet Jesus at. He, he knew right where Jesus was going to be at the time that Jesus was going to be there. Some of us, we walked in here this morning. Although we may have forgot that service was going to start at 10 or uh, 945, we still made it here by 10 because we knew where we needed to meet Jesus at. Somebody in here this morning, they walked in with the expectations that I need something from the Lord. Yes, the Bible says, the Bible says that he went and he met Jesus. Yes. And when he met Jesus, y'all look at the text, what did it say? He fell at his feet. Yes. Huh? That means that he fell and he worshipped him. See, too many times we want to come in here and we expect God to do something for us, but we don't even want to give him no worship. We don't even want to. Yeah. Yes, I got a problem. Yes, sir. Excuse me for being personal. I got a problem. I got a problem. When, 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 when my children walk in the house, and, and they, they expect me to give them something, but then they can't say hello. <laughs> you know, it, it, bothers, it bothers me that, that you walk in, you walk in the house and, and, and you want to eat up my food. You want to you wanna eat up my food, the water. You want to turn on the light. You want to do all these things. But then you don't even have the decency to say good morning. Hello. How you doing? How do you think Jesus feels when you walk up into his house and then you don't even have the decency to worship him? You don't even have to say thank you, Lord. But yet, see, we want to ask for something. How would you feel if I walked up to you and I asked you for five dollars and I never even spoke to you and asked how you're doing? Like, 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 we it's a privilege for us to be able to get something from God. I will say that that He fell at His feet and then He made His request known. He said, "I have a daughter that's sick." To the point of death. So, so that, so, so this ain't no common sniffles. This ain't no cold. This, this baby is sick to the point of death, and he knew where he had to go. 
so he goes to somebody that can be able to take care of his situation. Let's back it up. He is a ruler of a synagogue. That means that he has the best doctors, he has the best the resources, he has everything, but sometimes in life, that when the, the doctors can't do it for you. The best resources can't do it for you. Recommendations can't do it for you. The only person that can do it is the Lord. And he goes and he says, my daughter is sick to the point of death. But he said, if you will come and lay your hands on her, then I know that she shall be healed. That means that you, they had been following Jesus' career because Jesus had been known for going and laying hands. Yeah. By this time, and that's why the great multitude was following him because everywhere Jesus went, miracles was happening. People were getting healed. The blinded eyes were, were being made open up. Those with leprosy were being cleansed. Those that had muted tongues was able to talk. Those, those who uh, were lame were able to walk. Those who had withered hands was able to move their hand again. And so everywhere Jesus went, miracles was happening. And so he goes and he says, come lay your hands on my daughter. I know she will be made well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Jesus goes with him, with the crowd. And, and something happens. We didn't read it, but we all know the story. Something miraculous happens. Uh, as they're on their way, there's a woman that's been suffering yeah. with 12, young, 12 long years with an issue of blood. Yeah. Woke up that morning and she said, You know what? Enough's enough. I've been dealing with this for a long time, but today is the day. You ought to look at somebody and just say, Today is the day. And she said, Now, he don't have to know my name. He don't have to know what's going, what I'm going through. But if I can just touch the hem of his woman, then I know I'm going to be made well. And I don't know who this is, it is for him, but somebody came in here this morning and said, You don't have to know my you don't even have to know the situation that I'm going through right now. But if I can just get in his presence right now, I know that everything is going to be all right. Somebody walked in. Hold on, I'm going to come get you. Uh, somebody walked in here this morning and they said, if I can just get into his presence, uh, then I know that my situation is going to turn around for me. That's why it was amazing when, when the uh, soul said, she said, uh, God is able to do. Yes, yes, yes. He's able. And she touches the hem yeah. of his garment. Yeah. And Jesus stops yeah. and said, Who touched me? Y'all yeah. know the story. Yeah. He said, Who touched me? Yeah. And, and, and Peter and James and John said, What are you talking about? Who touched you? We didn't realize you so touchy, touchy, feeling. Really. You gotta understand, it's a crowd there. Yeah. It's like walking into the, the mall doing Christmas Eve. It, yeah. It's a big crowd that's there. Yeah. They're pushing you around. And then Jesus had to know to say, Who touched me? Yeah. Who touched the Jairus is feeling. Can you imagine what's going on in Jairus' mind? Because he's focused on his daughter. And you worried about what, what's going on and who touched you? Come on, man. Can you imagine what it would be like if you call 911 and an ambulance is on the way, but while they're on their way, they stop at Starbucks? They give them a frappuccino. Can you imagine what that would feel like? You riding in the ambulance, you saying that my loved one is sick to the point of death, and you riding, and they say, hold on, we finna go through the drive-thru. What do you mean you finna go through the drive-thru? Right, right. I need you right now. So many times in life, yes, we get so to the point that we're not concerned about nobody else, but the situation that we're going in. It doesn't matter what, every, what everybody else is going through. It's only about what it is that I've been going through and the situation that I'm in right now. But let me put a pause and let you know, when you learn how to praise somebody else for the things that they're going through, watch God turn it around for you. Let me move, let me move, let me move. Let me move. So here it is. That, that, that while Jesus is speaking to the woman, mm -hmm. while he's telling her that your faith has made you whole, word comes from Jairus' house yeah. and said, trouble Jesus no more. Uh -huh. Your daughter is dead. Yeah. Yeah. So many times in life, well, mm -hmm. how many times have we been, have been told, don't worry about it, it ain't gonna work. Right. Don't worry about it, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, I can remember, I can remember during the pandemic, 
right before it happened, uh, me and my wife, we had decided we were going to build a house. And, and a lot of our friends around us told us that that was a bad idea. They said, the market is so high right now. You shouldn't do it. I told my wife, I said, uh, we don't believe that God is going to be able to do it for us. And then we had some other folks that said, well, you know, you got to have at least a 720 credit score to be able to get into a house like that. And I told my wife, we still going to believe that God is going to be able to do it for us. Uh, I had some other folks that were told us because of the color of our skin, we would never be able to get into that subdivision. I told my wife, uh, as long as we believe that he's going to be able to do it. What am I trying to say? Number one is you got to understand that you, you, uh, in spite of the circumstance, you still got to believe. Look at somebody and say, in spite of the circumstance, you still got to believe. See, here, 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 here it is. Too many times we, we look at the circumstance. We look at how, how what everybody else seems to think. We look at how, how, how it is going on in our life. But yet still, we got to be able to believe and trust God. Because one thing that I do that I realize, I think it wasn't, that God works best in chaos. Huh, we learned that in our, in, in, in our uh, leadership conference, that God works best in chaos. He, he, learned, he works best under pressure. And sometimes the reason why some of us are, so much, are under so much pressure right now is because God is doing his best work in our lives. Come here, I see you sleeping. I got to go, but come here. Uh, I went to a stage play not too long ago, right? And if you've ever been to a stage play, you understand that they have scene number one and then they have scene number two, right? But during that transition part, they close the curtain, right? And they turn the lights off. And then they, you hear a lot of ruckus that's going on. That's because they're changing the scene. Well, guess what? It seems like you've been going through some dark times in your life. It seems like it's been real chaotic in your life. You've been hearing a lot of noise in your life. That's just because God is changing your scene. God is getting ready to change some stuff. On your behalf. You ought to just praise him right now in advance for the scene change. You ought to praise him right now for the things that get ready to turn around for you. You ought to praise him right now. I believe that God is getting ready to do it for me. So in spite of, in spite of what the doctors may say, in spite of what the creditors may say, in spite of what your your your, your education may say, all you gotta do is believe. Here it is, here it is. That when word came from Jairus' house, Jesus didn't even he didn't even address those who told it, but he addressed the one that believed. He said, Jairus, have faith and believe. If I was there, I believe that Jesus walked up to Jairus and said, Do you still believe? Jairus was like, eh. They at the house, Jesus. Uh, uh, do you still believe? Yeah. But they're telling me that, that. But do you still believe? Yeah. That, that, that's what happens a lot of times. Uh, we we, we want to sit back. We want to just question God on how he's going to do it. We want to question God when he's going to do it. Uh, and, and then you say, well, Lord, everybody said that it ain't going to happen. But do you still believe? Yes. It amazes me. Some of us, I ain't gonna point no fingers and look just straight ahead with what I'm about to say. Don't look around. Don't y'all look around. You'll give yourself up. <laughs> but it amazes me how how some of us in here, y'all looking straight, uh, will believe more in a Powerball ticket than we do in God. Week after week, month after month, year after year, we yet still going and giving out two dollars. We yet still going and giving out three dollars. We yet still going and scratching out. But we said this is gonna be the time. This is gonna be the one. And then we still don't, we still don't win. But yet still we go back. Week after week after week, but yet still, when it seems like you come to church and it seems like God is not doing what you, well, I'm just going. To, I ain't gonna go to that church anyway. It ain't gonna happen. All you gotta do is just keep coming back. And coming back and coming back. All you gotta do is have faith to believe. So not only, not only, not only do you gotta have faith in spite of the circumstance, but secondly, you gotta have faith regardless of the critics. Huh? Regardless of the critics, you gotta be able to have faith. Because because what happened is, is that when the word came to Jairus, Jesus asked, Do you still believe? Jared said, yes, I still believe. Jesus said, okay, well, let's ride. But he 
didn't take everybody with him. The Bible says that he just took Peter, James, and John. And he left the crowd behind. What am I telling you? In 2024, there's going to be some people you're going to have to let go. In 2024, you gonna have, there's going to be some people you're going to have to put to the side. Not everybody's going to be able to ride with you. That's why, you know, uh, some of our friends, uh, when we were building the house, some of our friends, they said we were acting real bougie, we were acting different. No, it's not that we acting bougie or different. It's the fact that we believe it and y'all not believe in what we believe in for. So, therefore, y'all can't ride with us because all you're doing is you're just hindering us. You are ankle weight, though. We're trying to sell for and you still drag us by. you got to be able to have faith to believe. You gotta be able to believe what it is that God said. You gotta be able to believe no matter what it sounds like. You gotta be able to believe no matter what it looks like. You gotta be able to believe no matter what it feels like. You gotta be able to believe no matter what your money may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what the doctors may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what financial aid may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what human resources may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what the attorneys may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what your family may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what your friends may say. Catch this. You gotta be able to believe no matter even what your church folks may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what the creditors may say. You gotta be able to believe no matter what the paperwork may say. I got faith to what? Believe. Talk back to me if you can. No matter what the critics say. Because when Jesus got to the house, Jesus says, what, 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 what are you doing here? You know, we got a life celebration by Franklin. They, they got their car out there. They get the gurney out. And they, and they saying, you know, the little girl's dead. And Jesus is saying, no, she's not dead. She's just sleeping. How, how many times in life have you had somebody tell you it ain't going to work? How many times in life have you ever had somebody tell you that this it's not going to be able to happen for you because of this, this, and that. Huh? How many times have we ever been able to say, Lord, I don't think it's going to, I, I may have missed what you had for me to say because, because your faith begins to get a little weary. It, it, it's right there when you get to the edge is when God is getting ready to bless you. It's right there. All you got to do is just have faith to believe in it and that's when God is getting ready to bless you. And I like what Jesus did because what? Watch what he said. He was like, mourners, y'all can go home. He tells he tell Barry and them, y'all can go home. He said, matter of fact, all y'all get out the house. But who does he take with him? He takes the mother, the father, Peter, James, and John. Those who believed that the little girl was just sleeping, he takes them in the house and he shuts the door. Huh? Sometimes we got to learn how to just shut our door. Sometimes we got to learn how to shut our mouth. But when God is getting ready to bless you, sometimes we just got to learn how to be quiet. Uh, I'll get out of here. Uh, but 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 the hardest the hardest time that we had doing that that that, that building of the house was being quiet. Y'all know me. I like to talk, Jesus. I like to tell everybody. And my wife and I we made a pack, and she said, "You gonna shut your mouth this time. You ain't gonna say nothing." And I was like, "How? how I, you ain't gonna say nothing." And so every day I was I was driving. I was driving by the property and I was looking and I was seeing little stuff happen and it took a while but but I, and I really wanted to tell somebody hey hey Susan Dick was I remember when the wood came up I, I, I got excited and I, and I really wanted to I really wanted to tell somebody but but but, but I knew the path that we had made and, and so I couldn't tell nobody I didn't even tell my mama them and, and so I was sitting up there and I and, and, and things began to really happen and the framework went up and I, I really wanted to talk about it uh, and I can tell it now and maybe I won't get in trouble but even one day I had Pastor Grant in the car with me and we just drove by I didn't tell him what it was <laughs> but uh, I just like oh, look at that that's kind of nice huh And Elijah tells her, how many jars do you got in your house? And then he says, go 
quiet, he works best in chaos. And so while he's working, you gotta learn how to keep quiet. So here it is that Jesus puts them all out. I'm out of time, sorry y'all. And, and, and Jesus puts them all out and Jesus goes and he grabs the little girl's hand. And he tells the little girl, Talana Kumi, that means arise. And the little girl, she got up and he gave her back to the parents. And he said, get her something to eat. Uh, that get her something to eat was uh, to simplify that she was restored back home. Uh, yeah. Now just remember that this girl was 12 years old. Uh, but there was a woman that had been dealing with something for 12 long years. Uh, that's why I come to tell you that you can't sit back and worry about what everybody else is going on in your life. Because if you see the parallel, uh, she was 12. Uh, but this woman had been dealing with for 12 long years. So that means at the same time, two people have been dealing with the same
we got to go. But there's somebody in here that they all know they here this morning. God has been telling them, just have faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have faith to believe. Thank you, Jesus. And God is getting ready to turn it around for you. But you, you're so concerned and caught up in what others may think. You know that you could need to come down here for months now and get prayer for the situation that you've been going through. God has just said, if you just make one step, I'll make two. I'm here for you. All you got to do is just believe. If you're here, you ought to come. Because I, I will trust in the Lord. Coming by Christian experience. Jesus, in Jesus' precious name we pray. And all the church saints did say, Amen. 